Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. From farm tractors to industrial tractors to lawn and garden tractors, over the years John Deere has built a little bit of everything for a little bit of everybody. And Patrick Whalen, uh, you have a tractor, a garden tractor that John Deere actually built for the U.S. Navy. Tell us about it. Yes, sir. These tractors were commissioned um, by the U.S. Navy to be built by John Deere. They built 50 of them originally out of the Horicon Works in Wisconsin. The Horicon Works was a little bit different than Dubuque. Dubuque would build almost anything for anybody, any amount of number, but Horicon needed 50 tractors in order to change their, their run. They went ahead and equipped the tractor with dual wheels right from the factory. It has a horn on it and a few other unique items that make it unique. Um, this one here, we actually restored it by archive photos, so we have proof that it was done exactly like this when it left the factory floor. Why do you think the U.S. Navy wanted a, a tractor like this, a John Deere 140, is that right? Yeah, 140. The hydrostat tractors are really easy to use. you got one lever, forward and reverse, um, very simple to drive, and I think they were probably quick to move around on the aircraft carriers and stuff is what we've been told they were used for. I'd like to find some photos from the Navy to where they were actually in use, but we've never been able to find them. So what year and, uh, again, on the aircraft carriers, huh? Yeah, on the aircraft carriers, as best as we know, um, 1970 is what year this tractor was produced, and all 50 of them, as far as we know, come right off the line right at the same time. They have brass plates on the passenger side there of, of has the exact model of the tractor and the Navy number on the plate. Most of them have been located somewhere near or been sold out of the Jacksonville Air Force or the Jacksonville Navy base when they were decommissioned. So how rare, if they only built 50 back in 1970, how rare is a, a Navy John Deere today? We know of four left in existence now that, that we're aware of. There may be some more out there, you never know, but that's, that's what we're aware of right now is four of them. And probably a few folks that if they do have them, they don't, maybe don't know what they have. Yeah, this tractor, that's actually an interesting story right there. This tractor, when we found it, it was painted green and it was actually on Florida Flywheelers grounds. And I was riding back to the back storage buildings with Tom Crawford to pick something else up and next thing I know I see Bernie and my dad standing outside a storage unit around a 140 and I'm like what in the world is my dad looking at another 140 for we have plenty of them we don't need another 140 and sure enough we get back there and he kind of hey hey it's a navy and I said oh well then <laughs> that good job let's see so we talked about it and the fellow that had it we um, we agreed on the price if he went and produced the navy tag and sure enough he had the navy tag so we agreed on the price and we traded on it and we brought it over to the spot and took mask and tape and put down the hood with the U.S. Navy numbers and really got interest sparked in it. And next thing you know, another guy that I had known for years shows up and says, oh, I bought that tractor from Martin County Auction and when I bought it, it was yellow and I couldn't tell that that was the right color or not, so I just painted it green. And it's funny, we know the whole history now from, you know, it was bought at the Martin County Auction through a friend of mine and then another fella got it and had it here on the grounds and we were able to pick it up. And sometimes collectors just uh, stumble on something that's pretty lucky. Tell me just a little bit about how you think this 140 uh, was built in terms of its quality and, and what it would do for the Navy. I mean, John Deere has always built a real quality product, in my opinion, and I think it was probably a good unit for them. I'm sure, and I've heard rumors that some of them went overboard or they threw them overboard because the 140 was famous for creeping once it got years put on it and jamming back and forth. They were famous for creeping back and forth. And so that maybe that's why they didn't build any more of them for the Navy. But I think as far as a quick, agile vehicle to move around, I think it would have been great. And how much of a restoration effort was it for you to get this 140 looking uh, back in military ship shape? It was a major effort. We had to go through and do a lot of work to it. The um, frame on it was pretty rough. There was a lot of stuff on it that was rough. We did a complete tear down and built it right back up from the ground up. Every nook and cranny's been painted and every bolt's been out of it and gone through and went through the motor and got everything, like you say, ship shape. And what is it for you about uh, restoring John Deere tractors? Why do you do it? What, what uh, does it do for you? What kind of feeling? It, 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 you get a lot of pleasure out of it when it's done. It, it's really satisfying to see the final product. We do a lot of tractors because we're in the restoration business. And w but it's always very rewarding to see the final product. And when we do one for a customer, it's really great to see how excited they are. And when they take it through the first parade and see it for the first time, um, it's just, it's a real pleasure, and I, th I think you guys got it right, it is a fever too, because every time you turn around, there's some other neat thing that you've just got to have. <laughs> and you've got that fever, don't you? Oh, yes, sir, I sure do. We sure do. <laughs> Tell 
me your very favorite thing about the, the Navy 140. I'd say it's probably the uniqueness of it, the different color and the dual wheels. You get a lot of questions about it, and some people think it's something you made up, and then when you explain to them that it was built it, you know, for a purpose, and the Navy actually commissioned them to build it, you get a lot of interest out of that. All right, Patrick, thanks for sharing the story of this uh, 140 that served in the Navy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Patrick Whalen with his John Deere 140 served in the U.S. Navy, now retired in Florida.